Okay guys, this is the trailer that we took on our recent overlanding trip and I'm just going to go through how I built it and what features I put on it and basically how it works. So, the trailer itself is a an ex-military trailer that I bought from Southern California. I forget the, the number of it, M1163 or something. But anyway, basically it's a flatbed trailer, so that's how we started. And the trailer itself, I believe, is it's quite old actually, maybe 30 years. But anyway, so moving on, the way the way that I started the build was I got two frames welded up. I put one on this side. These are aluminum frames, so they're so they're lightweight. I got one on this side and one on the opposite side. So that's how I started. Two frames bolted at the back bolted at the front and then from those two frames that's how I built up the rest. On top across the frames we've got a rooftop tent which is an alley cab model. Uh, I used to have this on top of my Jeep but it kind of didn't do that well on top of the Jeep when we're going over a rough road it started to come loose and bend the bracket slightly so I think it was a good move to take it off the top of the Jeep and put it onto the trailer. So this is an alley cab. It actually works really good. I mean, it's, it's a really good rooftop tent. It's solid. And this is bolted to the to the frame. And I've put some 80-20 cross beams across the two frames, bolted those on, and then bolted the alley cab onto the 80-20. So I've got one here, one in the center, and I've got one at the back also. And then in addition to that, because I, I didn't want anything coming loose again, you know, we're bouncing bouncing across uh, roads in Baja and the like. So in addition to the brackets that hold the alley cab to the frame, then I put these, uh, these whatever you want to call them, wire, wire ties at four corners. Uh, one here, one on that corner, and, and two on the back. And then I guess the next thing that I discovered when I took the trailer for a test run was the surge brakes, hydraulic surge brakes. I don't like them. Uh, what I found was every time I used to brake on the uh, on the Jeep then the trailer would kind of push the Jeep, pull the Jeep, it would be very jerky and erratic. And I thought, nah, that's that's not really going to work. The trailer itself has a has a pintle hitch, which it's okay. Some people say say they're they're noisy and they rattle around. They they do make a little bit of noise if you're going off-road, but on the road they don't make any noise at all. So I don't have a problem with the pintle hitch, but the hydraulic surge brakes, yeah, I had a big problem. So, what I discovered during my investigations on how to improve it, I discovered this unit, which is a Hydrostar, I guess it's a hydraulic pump. So I connected this into the hydraulic system and then electrically it's connected by a via this to the Jeep. Inside of the Jeep there's a brake controller unit which activates and controls the brake. There was a little bit of fine-tuning, finding the right settings or whatever, but actually it works pretty good. So that, that was a good thing. Then what else have we got? Um, well, I got this tongue box on the front from Harbour Freight. That was pretty cheap. I put that on there. And then inside of the tongue box I have all of the electrics that I put onto the trailer. I also got a Goal Zero battery that I that I keep in there and I charge that up from the 100 watt solar panel on top. The electrics that are in here are mainly lights around the trailer and also 
there's a water pump for a water tank that we have underneath. I also have a filter by the side and that's got a, a UV light in the middle of it so this, that's also connected to the electrics. So it's going to be the water pump, the filter and the lights. I have lights in the alley cab also and that's, that's pretty much what the electrics are. I'll probably um, shoot some more video in the evening where I can test out or show you the lights, how they work. When we came back from our overlanding trip, it was the middle of winter and we were driving through the States up to Washington, which is where we are now. And the salt and the snow was pretty brutal on the trailer and on the Jeep too, for that matter. So there are a number of areas that I need to fix up that have gone rusty. I guess it shows the weakness of certain parts, uh, certain components, if you like, of the trailer. Uh, maybe that's a cheap chain, I don't know, but that's gone rusty. Uh, the tongue box is not too bad, that pretty much stood up. Where, where the rust really, really had an effect was on the back of the, of the trailer, which I'll, I'll, I'll move the camera later and show you that. What else have we got? Let's let's uh, move through a few more things. So I got this I got this storage area. Again, it's built out of 8020. I can store in there quite a bit of stuff actually. We store um, some large chairs because comfort's important. So we have that. That worked out pretty good. It's all aluminum, or mostly aluminum. I guess this is an aluminum because on top that's gone rusty. Then handy dandy shovel of course with some, I think these are called quick fists. That worked okay, never came loose, pretty good. Actually nothing, nothing really came loose on the trailer and we were going over some pretty hairy or I don't know if you want to call them hairy but some some pretty bumpy rough roads. and. Everything stayed rock solid. So the all of the 8020, which is basically just bolted down, didn't come loose at all. It, it stayed really good. Nothing bent, nothing moved. So that's that says a lot for 8020. Then moving on down here, this is this is uh, where I keep two five-gallon containers of fuel just in case. We didn't really need to use the extra fuel, but it's it's there just in case, so it's always a good thing. And the containers that I use with these, what are they? Uh, Wavian. I think they're made in Eastern Europe somewhere. But they, they work pretty good. They're, they're a NATO style jerry can. The only thing I would say, if anybody has ever used these, when you, when you take the top off, first you've got to take that pin out and then you kind of release, you release that and it's released. The only fault that I found, and this happened to me, it also happened to uh, somebody else that I know as well, when you close them, you tend to want to force them closed. But what happens then is you bend, you bend the top here. So what you have to do is lift that up. See how that moves up and down? You just lift that up, pull it over, and then close it. Unless you know that, you tend to bend the top of the bracket here, and then you have to bend it back until you realize what's going on. But other than that, they work fine. They're pretty good. So moving on again. Uh, tires. Now these, these are some really good tires, trust me. These are KO2s um, and they worked really, really, really good. They worked in the snow, they worked in the mud, on gravel of course, and we it did rain when we were in Baja and we were kind of in the middle of nowhere and then it turned to, it turned to mud 
kind of real ugly slimy mud and yeah they work good very good no complaints about those whatsoever I've also got a a spare underneath that I kind of made a bracket for and put that up underneath just in case again but these are not cheap though I forget the price but at least a couple of hundred bucks each underneath we have a a slide out draw system that I bought from front runner and that has gone completely rusty all over so uh, maybe a call out a front runner put a little bit more paint or better thickness of paint or something on it because that that went rusty in no time just on one tr this one trip albeit it has been through snow and mud and rain but even so you wouldn't expect it to go as rusty as it has gone but you live and learn what I'll do is I'll go through everything and I'm gonna clean it up repaint it whatever so it'll be good everything will be good for the next trip I had to put this um, this wheel on this jack wheel on there as well just to jack it up to put it onto the trailer that seemed to work okay no no real issues with that on this side five gallon water container that's in addition to the I think it's a 15 gallon water tank we have underneath which is a stainless steel one on the back we carried a dual sport motorcycle and that was that was one of the areas of the build that we really wanted to accomplish was to be able to carry a dual sport motorcycle just a small one it's a Suzuki 200 so we put that on the back and I'll show you how that goes on a little later the alu cab there's two clips that you undo here and here and then get up and once you undo the clips just pull it up Like so. So on this side we have a faucet that's connected to the water tank and a pump so we can put a bowl on here and wash dishes or whatever we need to do. This unit is a shower unit so again holds water, pump it up, pressurize it and then a hose goes on here and takes a shower. This is where the I don't know if you can see this is where the filter is for the water supply coming out of the 15 gallon tank that we have underneath. When we need to fill the water tank, the 15 gallon underneath there, I can fill it from here, which is city, city water supply, or I can connect a hose here and connect it into, say, this container and then I can pump water into the tank. There's a couple of valves, one here and one here, that I change into different positions depending on, on what I want what I want to happen if I want to pump into the tank or pump out of the tank. That, that, that all works pretty good. The trailer does come with handbrakes, one this side and one that side, which is which is really good. So that worked out really well. That's why. I like having the electric over hydraulic brakes which doesn't disable the handbrake so we can still use the handbrakes. One other thing, wood. Wood is very important for campfires, right? So here there's a cage inside of here and that's where we keep some firewood. Probably enough firewood for, well, the fires we, we build it's barely enough of one fire but but that's okay in Baja there's plenty of driftwood plenty of wood around and you're never far from the beach because that's that's where you like to camp right so driftwood plenty of fires nobody bothers you nobody says you can't have a fire that was great extra one gallon of water on the side here like I say you can never have too much water I'm going to show you how we put the bike on the back this is what locks the front wheel in place
So that goes inside of the frame and then there's four uh, Allen bolts that just lock it down into position. Then we have this ramp. So that's the bike up there. And once it's secured over here in this frame, then the manufacturers of that frame, which comes from England, it's a uh, steady stand. They claim that if you're just driving along a normal road, you don't have to tie the bike down at all. That stand will hold the front wheel secure enough and it won't come loose. But, of course, I don't believe that. I like to, I like to have um, belt and braces. I like to make sure under no circumstances, no matter how rough the road, it's going to stay rock solid. So that's why I put a load of cinch straps on it. And also I have this aluminum channel that the back wheel sits in so it can't, it can't move more than half an inch either way unless it pops up. But then what I do here, I put a tie strap through the spokes of the wheel and I tie it here and I tie it at the back. So then the back wheel can't lift up and it can't go sideways. In addition to that, I then have a cinch strap attached here and I attach the cinch strap. We used to have a, we used to have a rack on the back of the bike and when we had the rack, I would attach the cinch strap here and to the rack and the same at the back. So I'd have two cinch straps here. I had a cinch strap attached here and I would attach it to the wheel here. And then at the back, here's one of the straps still on here. Here, like so, and cinch it up. So, effectively, a total of five cinch straps plus this, and that bike's not going anywhere. When I take the ramp down, I take the ramp down, and the ramp goes around the front above the wood cage where we used to keep some wood and it would just strap above that, like so. We have the first one, lights for the tongue box. Second one, lights on the side. Third one, lights on the opposite side. And fourth one activates the lights inside of the alley cap. When you're inside of the alley cap, I have, I have some additional lights, so if you get up in the middle of the night, and it's dark outside, what you do is there's a switch on the side here hard to see with the bike there, but you press this and voila there's some rock lights that come on. 